For our sermon text, we will consider Luke 2, uh, verses 7 and following. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And they spread the word which which they heard about this child. And all who heard what the shepherds had said were amazed. But Mary, she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned praising God and glorifying Him for the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What an amazing light show! Holy cow, to be there that evening, the shepherd on the hills, the darkness of the night, possibly even cool, uh, and, and you're sitting there just trying to pass the time as you watch the sheep, and bam, out of nowhere, this angel comes with this booming voice which proclaims this message of the Savior coming. And then the glory of the Lord had shone around them, and more angels show up, and there's this concert going on for glory and praise. Man, I wish we could find something amazing like that around Christmas time. My family used to have this tradition that every Christmas Eve we would go to church and then on our way back, before we would get home and open the presents, which I didn't always appreciate because it kept me in between this time of me and presents, but I grew to appreciate it long later on uh, as we continued to do this. We would go and see all the lights, especially the really cool decked out neighborhoods. My dad was a keen eye for hunting those out. And there was one in particular. I call it Candy Cane Lane. That's not the real name for the street, but that's what I call it. It was completely full of lights. All the houses on this about two-block span of a street that had a dead end on it were just jam-packed with all kinds of lights and decorations and everything. And so we would get in line with all of the cars on Christmas Eve and slowly ooh and ah at each and every house as we passed by. The last time I had seen those lights was about four years ago when I was uh, home for Christmas, and we did the same thing. Christmas Eve service, see the lights, go home, open presents. Until last year, we went back. We decided, let's try to get all our siblings together, uh, which everyone but one m made it out there that Christmas, but everyone was there, and, and we were having a good time. We went to Christmas Eve worship, and the street was right on its way, uh, right, on our, right on our way home, so we'd be able to stop by and see the lights, and I drove by, and nothing. Nothing. Maybe one house had a couple of strands of lights on it, and that was it. We don't have very many lights at my house right now. We've got a tree. It's got about three or four strands of lights on it. There's no lights on the outside. It's nothing compared to our neighbors who are across the street that now have, you know, the blow-up things and all that stuff. Um, 
if we don't get something amazing or spectacular for Christmas, what happens? Everyone's wishing for that, maybe that Christmas miracle that, that the movies portray. Somehow something fantastic has got to happen on Christmas, right? I'm not here to wow you with some amazing presentation or light show. I'm not here to show off some words. I'm here to show you the exact same message that you hear every Christmas. It starts off with darkness. All of us are darkened sinners. The shepherds, what did they really have? That God would show the angel of brightness to them? Mary. Was there something spectacular about her that she became the mother of God? No, she herself confessed, this is my Savior too. All of us have that darkness of sin. It's nothing amazing, nothing appealing, but it's there. And that's exactly why we come back to the same message every Christmas. It wasn't really the wow of the light show that evening that was the spectacular event. It was God who came down and wrapped himself in this frail flesh that we have. It wasn't in some amazing, spectacular show of events that really brought a Savior to the cross. Nothing that appealed to dying on the cross, beaten and bruised and bloody. But that's what saved us from our sins. That's what pulls us out of darkness and brings us into the true light of God. The same message every Christmas. That's the spectacular thing. Not the wow of lights. So this Christmas, you have an opportunity to be the shepherds. You don't have to wow people with these words, some amazing, convincing argument on how Jesus is the God. Just do what the shepherds did. Gave exactly what they had heard and seen. You know your Savior. You know the very simple message that Jesus died for me. Jesus died for you. That is what makes Christmas Christmas. Amen.